time for us to talk about our health. We're talking about cholera because the rains are back in season and everybody must know about cholera and how to deal with it and what it looks like, how it manifests. We've been talking about it for many years, but it's important that we remind ourselves of what this canker is. Joining me to discuss this issue on Skype is Doc DSP Dr. Faisal Ayambila. Good morning, Faisal. Good morning, Anama. And how good are you? Morning, I'm okay, doing fine. And how are you doing too? We're doing well. And it's good to have you because obviously you're not in Ghana with us. So talking about cholera today reminds you that you're coming back to Ghana very soon. Definitely that's the case. And um, uh, good morning to our cherished listeners. Good morning. Viewers, actually. Great. Yeah. Faisal, let's talk about cholera because, I mean, it's something that we talk about year in, year out. I don't think it's new to any Ghanaian. But what exactly is it that makes us, you know, talk so much about cholera and what we need to know about it in this current dispensation? Uh, well, Nanama, I would always say it's, it's, I find it's quite embarrassing that mm. we'll be talking about cholera in 2019. Yeah. <laughs> but as you said, it's a very common disease with high prevalence um, in Ghana. When you look at the, the cholera, it's actually an infection of the small intestines. And what happens is there's this bacterium or germ called Vibro cholerae mm -hmm. that finds itself into the food we eat and causes us to have all sorts of symptoms mm -hmm. like diarrhea and vomiting that could actually be life-threatening. Right. And so it's a matter of public concern because whenever the outbreaks occur, we do lose a lot of precious lives and people fall very ill. Mm. So it's something that we always have to talk about. And the wow. sad part, as you rightly said, is that the rains are here with us mm. again. And so chances are we would be having an outbreak very soon. So what, I mean, try and tie in the relationship between the rain and the outbreaks because it's all when the rains come that we you know tend to have a surge in the numbers but maybe people don't understand that correlation can you draw a clear line for us the truth is that there's always some amount of cholera in the background mm -hmm. every single day whether in the dry season hamatan or any time of the year that we do have some cases but what happens with the rains is the rain comes in with of course lots of flooding lots of water and you already know we have a lot of um uh, difficulty with our sewage system, with our toilet facilities and all of that. So with the rain hmm. as a facilitator, the bacterium that would be sort of in one location can find itself in a different location in the right. sense that this bacteria are located in fecal material. So if the water we begin to drink or the food we begin to eat gets contaminated by the bacterium, then we have a surge in the number of cases. Hmm. So the rain just brings in flooding and the flooding goes in into our very bad toilet facilities, sadly to say, and, you know, just creates the medium for the cholera bacterium to be propagated. Right. So, I mean, for most of us, we get diarrhea, we vomit once in a while, and it seems to be normal. Yes. What makes the vomiting and diarrhea associated with cholera so special? <laughs> it's, it's sad because um, what happens in cholera is it's actually a toxigenic type of bacteria. Mm -hmm. And... To say that it's a special type because it's more harmful than the regular um, diarrhea and vomiting we would usually have. Right. This bacterium is so virulent that it actually goes into the small intestines mm -hmm. and causes that level of irritation. It takes me back to when I first met um, a patient who had just finished about three hours prior to coming to the hospital. Right. Then it dawned on me that, wow, this is a very very um, severe form of diarrhea and vomiting. Mm -hmm. The patient would literally go to the bathroom as so many times to the point that the stool begins to look just like pale, pale water and nothing in it. That's what we usually we would refer to as the rice water stool. Right. And so it's life-threatening. It's mm. an extreme form of what we are usually used to. Mm. So what are some of the effects of having this form of severe diarrhea and vomiting that is associated with cholera? The symptoms, of course, would range from mild to severe. Mm. In the mild forms of cholera, you would have, let's say, three or four days of passing loose to with some vomiting and abdominal pain. Mm. That really shouldn't cause a lot of trouble. Mm. But in the very severe forms, as I mentioned um, a few minutes ago, in the very severe forms, even just about two hours after eating your food, you could have a very explosive form of um, diarrhea that would cause you to lose almost all the water in your body. So then you begin to have this bluish discoloration of the skin. Mm. Some people cannot even talk to you anymore. Some can't breathe well. Some become 
let's say comatose for want of a better word, hmm. in the sense that they wouldn't even respond to your voice anymore. And all that leads to death because hmm. um, of the depletion of the water on such a large scale of body water. Very well. So now that we know a bit about cholera, how do we prevent it? Yes, the cholera is the perfect example of how sometimes health and diseases tie in intrinsically with um, poverty, economic indicators, and things like that. Because I was look, reading through the literature, and it says that the last cholera outbreak we had in the U.S. was in 1910, 1910 And here we are in 2019 talking about cholera because it happens every year. The biggest thing we'll have to do is to prevent it, of course. And the prevention has to do with... Um, Simple techniques like hand washing, you wash mm. your hands before you eat, make sure your food is always hot. And the funny thing is, usually in times when we have cholera, the number one food is, is wachi. And I think it has to do with the salad that is on top of it that mm. is not properly cooked. Right. And so you'd want to make sure your food is warm, you've washed your hands before you eat, you practice um, good toilet hygiene. Mm. But on a larger scale, on a national or regional scale, we need to have better water facilities. We need to have better management of fecal material. Mm. Because the sad truth is that cholera, a person would get cholera just because he has, he or she has gotten in contact with someone else's fecal material, right. which is rather embarrassing. <laughs> and so supposing you identify, what, I mean, what advice would you give people in this particular time? Should we wait until the person is passing so much loose stools before we send them to the hospital or immediately anyone complains of diarrhea and vomiting, you head to the hospital? The truth is um, there should be a lot of sensitization. And of course, um, TV3 always makes this possible through the New Day program. Mm -hmm. In the sense that people would always wait and say, oh, this one is nothing, it's regular diarrhea. Mm. Please, I think once the, the person has passed over three three times of loose stool, three episodes of loose stool, the person should be sent to the hospital. They may or may not be vomiting, right. but in this time when you you can't entirely be sure mm -hmm. what it is, it's it's safer to get the patient to the hospital, especially the school children mm. who go to schools sometimes in the school and and. Uh, you know, under the notion that they would be taken home at about 2 o'clock and all of that. As soon as the diarrhea starts, we should see the person in the hospital because cholera could take a life within two hours, hmm. which is, yes. And whilst we wait, supposing you're, a, I, I mean, I would want to speak for those who probably don't have transportation to the nearest facility. Whilst you're waiting, what sort of first aid can you provide to anyone having this form of diarrhea or vomiting? Yes, it's very important we talk about this because, of course, it's not every situation where you could readily rush someone to the hospital. Mm -hmm. What you could do is administer um, the oral rehydration salts, which are very popular in our context. Mm -hmm. In the absence of the regularly, the pharmaceutically prepared brands, there are preparations that would use regular salt at home and sugar with certain amounts of water to prepare a, a sort of rehydration solution to help people combat the effects of the diarrhea. Hmm. But if in all this, these things are all so difficult for you to get at that point, even coconut water does the trick mm -hmm. sometimes, especially in children, mm -hmm. or any form of water, anything that is available to keep the patient rehydrated would be of appreciable value at that time. Great. Finally, Faisal, let's talk about the hand washing techniques because this is another <laughs> problem, you know, in Ghana. We talk about it all the time and we assume everyone knows how to do it. But walk us it's... through a proper hand washing technique and what it entails. Okay, so, um, okay, let me see. Let me look out for my hands. My <laughs> hands are here. We always have this joke that people would, would wash their hands properly only after they have eaten, when they have food on their hands. But mm -hmm. you would want to wash your hands to the extent that you can get into all these um, spaces between the fingers, mm -hmm. it should be a process that will take close to about two minutes. You must be patient enough to have the soap go around all the hands, all the way, mm -hmm. if possible, in the hospital context, we would even say all the way to the elbow would be appreciated. But if you are unable to do the full hand washing, at least make sure that the appreciable areas of your hands that would get in contact with food should be properly cleaned. And of mm. course, hand washing should be done immediately after you leave the bathroom. And of course, after, just before, no, I said after, but just before you have your meals, you should properly wash your hands. We mm. take this thing for granted, but mm. cholera can affect anyone from the person working out in the hot sun to the person in the suit and tie in the office. 
Well, let me say thank you to you, DSP Dr. Faisal Ayambila, for joining us to discuss this very important topic. We hope that this discussion will help to reduce the number of cases that will be reported in this year in this particular rainy times. But